What's going on everybody? Today's video, what are we doing and what are we talking about? Today is a collab video. Once again, I'm teaming up with Tony from the Hard for Games YouTube channel. And today we're going to be talking about the Intelligence Systems CGB AGB emulator unit. So now there's lots to cover, there's lots of details, uh, there's specifics regarding how the hardware is used and how it's interfaced with different pieces of equipment, uh, as well as a lot of the software and the different features that the software has. So there's quite a bit for us to cover in this video, but I'll speed it along as best I can and it should be cool and interesting. So without further ado, let's just get this started. Here we go. So now I've talked about this unit in the past and it's a development unit that developers use not only for testing ROMs that were being compiled and games under development, uh, however it was also used as a debugger system, test out code, doing breakpoints and analyzing different memory and registers. However there were many different software packages that Intelligent Systems released for this unit. Today I'm going to be talking about the debugger uh, software for this unit as well as the graphics editing program, that being the character editing software. And that's used for editing textures, sprites, uh, backgrounds, that kind of thing. Uh, now, uh, before we dive into the control interface and all the software that is used with this unit, I want us to go and take a look at the internal electronics and the main PCBA of this unit. So if we remove the top cover of the emulator unit, you'll see the main PCBA as well as a daughter card for the Game Boy cartridge socket. On the right side, you'll notice a IDC socket connector, and that is used for configuration and programming and testing during development. On the left side of the main PCBA, you'll notice a 72-pin SIMRAM card memory installed. This was actually quite common for equipment used during the 90s. Adjacent to the SIMRAM card, you'll notice a couple of voltage regulators, as well as a 3 volt max cell coin cell battery. This is used to power a 1 megabit RAM chip that's used for configuration. You'll also notice the Game Boy cartridge socket, which is attached to a daughter card. This is referred to as the EMU cartridge adapter 2. The back of the unit has a toggle switch for power. You also have a SCSI ID set of dip switches and the two SCSI interface ports for connecting to your computer PC or additional hardware. The heart of the system is a Xilinx XC4020XL FPGA chip, as well as a 32 MHz crystal clock, an NEC SCSI controller chip, along with a Nintendo Virtual Boy CPU processor model number NVCVUE. This is likely Nintendo repurposing old stock components. We also have a 1 megabit static RAM chip, an 8 megabit sharp flash memory chip, and an Altera Max CPLD for storing the firmware of the system. So now you have the emulator software, the debugger software, as well as the character software packages that were optional to work with both the Color Game Boy a system as well as the Game Boy Advance. Uh, versions of the hardware, uh, depending on the features that you had enabled. Now, the uh, anime viewer software, that was operational with the uh, Game Boy Advance, as well it operated with the N64 uh, system using an Intelligent Systems Viewer 64 development cartridge, specifically for the Nintendo 64. So for the character software package, you could use this with the emulator unit, however you could also use it with a development cartridge that Intelligent Systems released called the AGB PIC, or AGB Parallel Interface Cartridge. And that was just a small Game Boy cartridge with a ribbon cable attached to a printer port 25-pin connector. And so developers would simply attach this to a Windows PC running Windows 95, 98, and you would just make sure that you had the development cartridge inserted into a standard Game Boy Advance handheld, and that would allow you to develop and use the software and view all the changes to the graphics that you were making uh, in real time. 
Between these two pieces of hardware, functionality of the software is the same. However, the AGB PIC was a much uh, cheaper alternative for developers if they were specifically wanting to use the character graphics software. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a very quick uh, preview of how this debugger software works. So this is the AGB debugger software. So we'll go ahead and activate that. And this is the window that you see when the software starts. You have a, a project window here that shows you all of your files that are associated with the project you're working on. You have a source code window to look at different source code files. As well, you have a few different windows here for looking at memory, as well as some of the hardware registers of the Game Boy Advance system. So we're going to look at one of the SDK demos, and it's called the Dolphin Demo. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. And here under the project window, you can see all the source code files that are associated here. So we're going to look at this player.c uh, source code file. And when you open this up, you'll notice all the different functions uh, that are within this source code file. And I have one here that I've uh, set up here with some print messages. So now these conditional statements are for when the player is pressing uh, on the directional pad push buttons. And so when one of the push buttons is executed, we can have a custom message being printed down here on our command window. And this is happening in real time uh, through the emulator unit, through the SCSI cable and back here to our debugger software. So now what I'm gonna do is insert a breakpoint and we do that by double clicking on this line of code and we can do this anywhere in our code within the game loop. And what the breakpoint does is it will actually halt the game from running uh, on the system uh, and allow us to go in and monitor and look at some of the memory information or the register information. So now if we run this, so we'll go ahead and build this. We're gonna compile all this code. And as you can see down here, it shows you all that process. And then the completed stage, it shows you a dolphin.l file, which is our compiled uh, ROM file with uh, debug information. And we also have a binary version of that compiled file if we wanted to use it for a different platform. So now if we go ahead and run this, we can do that by hitting F9. As you can see, the Game Boy, it is running the ROM. So now as we press left and right down you can see those debug messages being uh, printed on the command window. Now, if I press the up button on the directional pad, you'll notice that the game actually has halted and it has essentially paused the game and it's allowing us to go and monitor some of the information uh, within our registers or any other area of memory. You'll also notice that the breakpoint line has changed color. Uh, this is just to let you know that it has been reached and you're able to go in and monitor and check some of the register information. So that's pretty much uh, the basics uh, of the debugger software. Um, and it's there's lots of different uh, functions and different features that the software provides, but this is just some of the very, very basic uh, features that uh, developers would be using when they're debugging a game. Now I've had a lot of people ask me what the six pin connector is used for that's on the front of the emulator units and that's a connector socket number two. So this socket is used for when developers would interface the AGB emulator unit to an AGB capture device and those pins were used for sending out the reset and as well the interrupt signals. When developers would be running uh, breakpoints that would trigger an interrupt and that signal was fed through the six pin connector to halt uh, the hardware and allowing them to go in and analyze some of the data or registers. So now this reset and interrupt signal is not only fed through the front of the emulator unit on that six pin connector, it is also fed through the ribbon cable that then goes to the probe cartridges. And the probe cartridges can be interfaced to uh, CGB or AGB Game Boy handhelds. And that's where you have those modified consoles with a little cable. When you connect that using the handhelds, uh, you not only have DC power that's being fed from the probe cartridge uh, to power the handheld, you also have a reset and an interrupt signal. And again, that allows the debugger software or all the other software packages to have control uh, of performing uh, breakpoints or hardware and software resets. 
And the same situation applies when the probe cartridge is inserted into a Wide Boy 64. And that is specifically just the reset and interrupt signals being fed to the Wide Boy 64, allowing the emulator system to have control when a reset or an interrupt are being executed. Okay, so we'll go ahead and open up the character software. This is for doing graphics on the Game Boy Advance. Okay, so here we go. Now, this is a project that I had set up beforehand. Um, so when you're working with this software, you have these texture files that are referred to as character files. And essentially these are uh, graphics uh, that are stored within ROM memory. And now for this demo that I have here, uh, I just sort of slapped together some graphics that I had found on file. However, in reality, a lot of the time, developers would cram all of their graphics in as tightly together as possible uh, just to maximize the use of memory in the ROM space. Uh, but again, this is just for demonstration purposes. So essentially what we're doing with these texture files or these character files is we're using uh, areas of the graphics within this file and just copying and pasting and creating elaborate uh, background images or uh, object files, which are essentially frames as part of animation sequences. So if we open up a background file, so this background file here that I have, they're referred to as screens. And as you can see here, I've uh, copied and pasted this little area of the uh, texture graphic uh, over and over again multiple times to create this background. And so now if we were to preview this, we would just hit view, preview settings, and we could set up our background that we want to preview. And you have a little window here that shows you your memory map of where that information is within VRAM. Uh, you can designate and choose uh, which background files you want to uh, preview, as well as some of the uh, palette information. Uh, so now if we go ahead and hit this button here for preview, on the hardware, it's going to stream this information in real time over to the Game Boy Advance system, whether it's on the emulator unit or the parallel uh, cartridge. And so as you can see, we have the graphic being displayed. And so now, uh, if, I, if I reference a, a graphic from the uh, texture character file and just copy that, and if I paste it directly onto this background. So as you can see, as I move this around, it's being relayed onto the Game Boy Advanced handheld uh, in real time. Now developers also would create uh, object files or frames and would do this in the same way and they were able to make changes to each frame and then add those together as part of an animation sequence. So that's what this software was used for. And so here's another cool graphic that we can take a look at on our Game Boy Advance. So I'm sure all of you recognize this graphic. Anyhow, it's a, it's a pretty cool uh, little software package and it allowed some sophisticated um, uh, editing of graphics for backgrounds and also for animation sequences. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Now looking at the top of the emulator unit, you'll notice a decal showing the cartridge socket for Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance cartridges. So developers, when they were developing their game and running their code, 90% uh, of the time they would be using the internal RAM that comes with the emulator unit, and that's referred to as internal memory. However, when developers were at a, a certain point in their game where they needed to confirm whether the code would work on an actual cartridge, uh, developers could use a flash development cartridge for Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance and they would insert it into this socket and it would allow them to perform uh, different read and write functions uh, to validate functionality so that the game could access memory properly and that everything would run smoothly. However, when that was being used, developers could not use the functionality of uh, breakpoints. Uh, because in order for breakpoints to work properly, uh, the internal memory uh, SRAM has to be used. Now, a really cool thing about this system is developers had the option of interfacing a special MIDI development cartridge to the front socket on the emulator units. So they would just simply insert this cartridge, which had uh, the five pin uh, DIN connectors uh, for interfacing standard MIDI devices uh, to the emulator system. 
and that would allow them real-time control uh, over MIDI uh, sequencing. Uh, so for instance, they could hook up an external MIDI keyboard or they could hook it up to uh, sequencers, that kind of a thing, uh, for having control over MIDI signals. And that would allow real-time control uh, for doing uh, sound and music development uh, on the emulator units. So that's a pretty cool feature to have. So that's it guys, that's today's video. I wanna give a big thanks to Tony from the Hard For Games YouTube channel. If you guys have not checked out his channel, do yourself a favor and go over and check it out. He's got tons of gaming videos, he does live streams, he's, he's got development equipment. He covers so much content and it's just awesome and he's been doing it for years. And I love doing collab videos with Tony, so it's always super awesome when I get to do that. Thanks again for watching. Hit the like and subscribe if you can. I do appreciate that always. And you guys are awesome. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Ciao.